What's up, everybody, and welcome to the latest edition of the Falcons in Focus podcast presented by Ticketmaster. I'm Scott Baer. That's Tori McElhaney. Gentlemen, in the middle, QB1, Desmond Ritter for the Atlanta Falcons. Desmond, thank you so much for joining up. Thank you for having me. Uh, before we get to anything that's modern day or present tense, we Tori did find a great story that we have to go back. We have to take you back to uh, Churchill Downs, mm-hmm. right? Mm. This is On maybe five six years ago yep. junior year in high school on oaks day i believe which for those don't that don't know what this is this oaks day is apparently like a freaking big holiday in louisville kentucky Huge. and your hometown and it's the day before the kentucky derby mm-hmm. is that correct that's correct now i know the story because i saw it in uh pat ford did this really great story on you and sports illustrated when you were kind of going through the pre-draft process i definitely recommend people go read it but he tells the story and it's one of my favorite stories that has ever come out about a person that we've interviewed on this podcast please t- take us back to five or six years ago you're at churchill downs on oaks day supposed to be partying it up but instead mm-hmm. you get a phone call drop it, us into history it goes yeah it goes even a little bit before oaks day so you know in college when you're getting recruited they the the coaches will come down and watch you throw um so at the time one of the wide receiver coaches from Cincinnati had came and watched me throw um you know had a pretty good throwing session and then you know I I get back to school or whatever it was and I get a call and they're like hey we want to come back down in about two weeks um you know we'll let you know when Uh, I want to bring the offense coordinator Zach Taylor down and we'll come watch your throws I'm like okay so the week of, you know, my, my coach meets me in the lunchroom, and he's like, hey, Des, they, they want you to throw on Friday morning. And I looked at my coach, like, because we all know what Friday morning is. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like coach, it, it's Oaks. He's like, yeah, I know. He's like, he's like, get your guys, like, it'll be good. I'm like, all right, like, this is probably, you know, where my leadership role kind of starts. And <laughs> so I'm like, guys, I'm like, look, I need you guys Friday morning. Uh, you know, we'll be out there. So we'll get out there at 7 o'clock, start throwing 7.30. We'll be done by 8 o'clock, 8.15. Go home, get dressed, get some food. We'll be good to go. Uh, so Friday morning comes around. We get out there. We have a great workout. Guys are good. Go home, get dressed and everything. Everyone gets some food. Um, and then we get to Churchill Downs. And, you know, I'm still thinking kind of, you know, I'm almost kind of done thinking about the throwing. You know, I knew I had right. a good throwing session and yeah. everything. So let's go have some fun. Let's go watch these ponies race. Um, and, you know, midway through, it was probably about 1 o'clock during the day, um, I get a phone call from a Cincinnati number, and, and it was them. And it was Coach Tuberville. Mind you, I'm in the middle of Churchill Downs right. in the infield. I don't know how many people have been there, but it, it's chaos. It's yeah. wild. It's loud. There's Especially people. Especially on this day particularly, right? Yeah, and yeah. On, on Friday, because in Louisville, actually, most of, I would say about 90%, 95% of the schools have off. Yeah. From kindergarten through high school. So we're talking full co- holiday. Yeah, full holiday. So everyone's got that Friday <laughs> off. Um, so that's where all the kids are at. So you think of thousands of thousands <laughs> of high school kids just in the middle of, of Churchill Downs. That's where I was at. And so I get the phone call, and I look around. Obviously, I didn't have any money back then, so I had the cheapest ticket, just general admission. I had nowhere to go. I'm looking, I'm looking, I can't hear a thing. It's like, Coach, give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> take off to the nearest porta potty. That was that was the most indoor thing that I could find, where I could be isolated by myself and be able to hear. Um, so I, I I took my buddy, me and my buddy went. Uh, my buddy stood right outside the porta potty, waited for me, and I opened the door with just like the biggest smile on my face. He's like, "Was that it?" I was like, "Yeah, that was it." And then we all just celebrated the rest of the day. Um, it obviously made it obviously a memorable moment for yeah. me, but um, it was huge. It was fun. That's did, the funniest thing. That's one of my favorite stories. Did Coach Tuberville know where you were? Yeah, did you tell him? Yeah, so they they <laughs> knew they knew where I was at because, I mean, I told them, like, I mean, they knew we were coming there on Friday you morning. There was no yeah. school. They was like, as soon as they were done, they was like, all right, you guys go have fun. Like, you know, we know what today is. Go have fun. Um, so, yeah, they knew they knew what it was, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the call was bigger than some things. <laughs> <laughs> so the famous port the, the offensive coordinator that worked you out, Zach Taylor, is yeah. now head coach of the Cincinnati Bengals mm-hmm. institution over there now. Um, you, you didn't get a chance to work with him, but do you still keep in any sort of contact with him? Now you both in the NFL and you were kind of starring in Cincinnati. The yeah, there was obviously, you know, contact throughout the throughout the whole, you know, kind of just my career um, that it, it's kind of been, you know, Coach Taylor, like I said, he recruited me there you know got to know my family really well 
Um, you know, took me on multiple visits to Cincinnati. And so um, that was the guy who I thought I was going to play for, the guy that I thought I was going to learn under. Um, and then obviously, you know, the coaching change happened and, and he went elsewhere. I think he went to the Rams as a wide receiver coach. Um, but even then, we still kept in connection. You know, he's, he's let me know, good game. I'm watching you this, that, and the third. Um, and so, you know, our connection just kind of stayed there. Um, and then obviously, you know, we played him last year, talked to him after the game. Um, and, and, you know, it's just been wild to kind of mm -hmm. see how, obviously, being at Cincinnati and then, you know, he's at the, the Rams for a little bit, and then you see he gets a head coach job at Cincinnati. It was just kind of, you know, a full circle. I think that's so cool. And so I read something that you you didn't really take a lot of time to, like, deliberate that you were going to go to Cincinnati. I, I think it was a quote saying something like, I'm not going to draw – this process out but in the middle of that you know there is that coaching change and so how long from the time that you were in that porta potty and you get the offer <laughs> to you actually like making a full-on decision how long was that I mean what it's always first week of May yeah um, so you know going into that off season of my junior year I broke my foot in December playing basketball, um, so I was recovering from that. And so, you know, those throwing sessions right there around derby time, around this time, uh, was kind of like my first kind of getting back into throwing, getting back into going. Um, and, you know, I'm here from, you know, multiple different schools that they're going to offer me, you know, this and that and the third. So I'm just waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. And I, none of those schools had offered me when they said they were going to offer me two weeks ago and they haven't got anything. So, you know, I know the process is, is just getting drawn out, but you still have a whole senior year and right. stuff. But I got that I got that Cincinnati offer, um, and you know shortly after that Cincinnati I got EKU. Um, but I sat down with my high school coach and he said, you know, look, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you, you gave us your goals. You wanted to go play Division One football. Um, you want to go play at a high level. You obviously want to go to the next level and to the NFL. Um, and so once I got you know Cincinnati and we looked at it, took a visit and you know obviously had driven up there an hour and a half away from home. Um, so I'm you know kind of familiar with the area. Um, you know, we looked at it and said, hey, you know, th this is a place where, you know, I could see myself playing. Um, and, you know, I'll forever be thankful to, to my high school coach, Coach Dave Nuremberg, um, who, who kind of helped me with that process and helped me with that decision. And uh, one of my favorite stats of yours is 44 and 6, right? Because that kind of says everything about the legacy that you left with the Bearcats, right? But let's go back to 1 and 0, which was at the Rose Bowl. <laughs> Small aside, I went to UCLA, and when Drake was in your seat, he mentioned all these times that he kicked UCLA's butt. Right. And now I'm going to open myself up for another humiliation. Yeah. Because 1-0 oh two, was – Two humiliations. Oh, two, <laughs> two humiliations. You're right. They Thank came, you. Yeah, they came back Thank to Nipper the next year <laughs> and got that work. Appreciate that. Oh, it never ends. Okay, Just so – Just drive it further and right. further. Right. So you're at the Rose Bowl mm -hmm. yeah. for your first game – Against, I mean, UCLA was what it was back then, but still, like, that's a huge moment, 90,000 people, the whole thing, and you come out of that one with a win. Like, what was that? What did that mean to you if you look at the 44-6, and six, right? Like, what did 1-0 and oh mean there? Oh, it was huge. Um, I wanna, uh, Let's calm down on the 90,000. It might have been about <laughs> 15 because they weren't, in, they in, weren't the in school yet. Yeah, it was, it was first game up. of the season, so they also weren't in school like yet. Also, not, like, playoff you know, but yeah. no, it was huge. You know, you know, coming, you know, going to Cincinnati and obviously, um, you know, Cincinnati at the time was, you know, a smaller school and everything. Mm -hmm. um, you, you hear about UCLA, you hear about the Pac-12 and you know, all these big time schools. And for us, we were coming off a four and eight season. Um, and so not really knowing what the what the, the next year was going to look like. Um, you know, it was obviously, you know, that's a scary feeling not knowing what it's going to be. Um, obviously, you know, what did I wanted to do and what I wanted to be. Um, so when we went out there, you know, obviously that was my first time going west of the Mississippi. So when I got off the plane, it was already like, oh. I mean, I'm seeing mountains that are bigger than hills I've ever seen before. I mean, it was just a whole, you know, it's kind of a, a culture shock to a lot of us because we've never even been out that way. Uh, we have one tight end, Josiah Degar, who's with the Packers right now, who's from California. Other than that, everyone's, you know, Midwest and over. So um, going out there it was fun. Um, we obviously know. Um, that we wanted to go out there and win. Uh, we didn't know, you know, what the game was going to be like, you know, how it was going to be played. Uh, and, you know, for us, it was a ground and pound game. Uh, just keep the ball moving, and that was something we were able to do. Uh, someone who I think has been very every – everything that I read about you and doing preparation for this podcast, um, Coach Gino was someone who 
his quotes were the ones that I think I leaned on most. And Coach Gino was your quarterback's coach. He's now with Notre Dame, I Correct. believe. What was um, y'all's relationship like? What what kind of did y'all's relationship look like, even in the early days of, of you getting to Cincinnati? Yeah, Coach Gino was like an older brother to me that like, uh, you know, was an older brother of like 15 years. Right, uh, yeah. <laughs> And so, you know, there were times where, you know, it was joking and everything and, and you know, brother, brothers. And then there's times where, you know, he's snapping me into shape. And, uh, you know, obviously throughout everyone's cause times, there's ups and downs, there's good and bad. Uh, but through all of it, you know, he was there for me. Um, and so, you know, he helped me with everything, uh, you know, on the field, off the field, whatever it may need be. Uh, you know, he was kind of the guy that, you know, I leaned on to, to talk to because, uh, you know, obviously – he played at Cincinnati, was one of the, the quarterbacks, Cincinnati quarterback greats there. Um, and, and, you know, so just being – he was also from Kentucky, Northern Kentucky. Right, so yeah. just having so many similarities to each other um, and both being younger guys, you know, it, it kind of just helped us bond together. Now, there was a video, and then we can kind of move on in your story, but there was a video from when you made the announcement that you were coming back to Cincinnati for your last year. And I don't know if this is real or not, but in that video, it's like a – text message between you and like coach Gino and it was you kind of saying like I want to come back and break your records like I want to get us back to this uh, get us another conference championship all that kind of stuff was that real or no, that was a real message really yeah, that was a real message because I was watching it and I was like wow they really did like some cool like post-production stuff I wonder it, so that's a really cool yeah that was that was before production that was before that was, <laughs> that was raw messages going back and forth between us and then obviously it turned into that but that's cool uh yeah no you know that's just the type of relationship I have obviously uh, you know, knowing him, you go in there and you see he's on the, the ring of honor. So, uh, you know, seeing that name and, and that was the last quarterback name that's been put up there. So uh, seeing that and seeing him in the building every single day, obviously just gave me the motivation to, to go be better than him. It made it easy. You know, it's kind of hard to sometimes try to be better than someone that you, you know, never seen or don't even right. talk to her or, you know, it's just a name on a wall. Like, oh, I want to be better than that guy. Uh, but when he's right there with you and you're like, OK, I got I got to get after it. <laughs> right. Now. Yeah. It's like you're pushing like what you said, your big brother. A yeah, yeah. 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 And that that was a big year for you. Right. Your senior year. We obviously know what the Bearcats did over the, you know, the mm -hmm. college football playoff and stuff like that. It was a big year personally as well. Um, if I'm doing the math right, and my math is not always good, you had your daughter Leighton that same year, mm -hmm. right? In April, yeah. Yeah, in, in, in April, because her birthday is coming up uh, on tomorrow. the tomorrow, couple, April couple 19th. Hour, about, <laughs> about 27 hours. <laughs> um, so you're, you're a college guy. You're heading – steamrolling towards the NFL draft. Mm -hmm. You've got a program that you've helped elevate, and now you got a little one, like, running around. Like, what was that experience like adding her to all of this type of stuff? I mean, so many positive things yeah. happening at the same time for you. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, you know, it was just hectic. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, can't even. That's, that's, a, that's, about all you, yeah, that's about all you could put it. Uh, no, obviously, you know, as anyone who has a child and everyone knows, you know, they're, they're your motivator. Um, they're, you know, what makes you wake up every single morning and go to work and do what you do. Um, but no, you know, everything, you know, worked itself out. I obviously have a great support system with my wife, um, who was there for me throughout, you know, college when I'm going to school and then going to practice. Um, she's there, she's there with Layton. So, um, and then obviously now, you know, the days are long and then the nights are long. So, um, you know, she did a great job of, you know, kind of let me focus on, on what I needed to do. Um, and, you know, she kind of, you know, took her motherly role at that point. But, uh, no, you know, obviously I couldn't do it without her, couldn't do it without my support system. So, uh, but, yeah, it, it was a hectic time. <laughs> I so, joke all the time that Leighton's my favorite Ritter. She's <laughs> the cutest. She, she really is. is. So you met Claire, your wife now, mm -hmm. in high school at a movie theater? Oh, dang, y'all did some good research. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, really, we're really, we try to, yeah, we we try to, to dig around a bit. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah so – Freshman year, it was, I think, uh, in high school, obviously, you know, you go in as eighth graders and start summer workouts for yeah. your mm -hmm. uh, freshman football team. Uh, I had met a buddy and, you know, a couple of us, you know, obviously throughout the summer, get along, have be friends. Um, and he was like, let's, let's go see the movie. It was Insidious. Uh, mm -hmm. So a scary movie. So it was, <laughs> it was my buddy, myself, and maybe one or two other guys. And then he's like, hey, my friend's going to meet us there. Like, is that cool? Sure. Okay. Boom, I open the door to the movie theater. She's sitting there. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, Fist, this is your friend. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. And, uh, yeah, and uh, 
you know, obviously introduce yourself, you know, sign next to each other, whatever. And uh, obviously didn't do enough then because uh, <laughs> it wasn't about till two years later, two and a half years later of when I uh, finally made my move to, okay. to ask you the question. It. So, yeah, how well, to, no, how no, to no. slow Here's play Here's the thing. The part of this that I feel like he's not telling – you said you're a freshman in mm-hmm. okay, freshman in high school. You were like five nine, 130 pounds, probably at oh, that point in time. Oh, that's an excellent. Two years point. <laughs> later, you were like six four, 185. But also, she claims it was hair. I don't know if oh. you guys, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the movie Holes. Yes. Um, were you like zero? Zero. <laughs> yes. So my hair, I had, I had a big fro. Um, and so she claims it was the hair okay, and then okay. it was actually, you know, convenient enough, uh, sophomore year spring ball, I lost a bet. And so I brought in the clippers to practice wow. in the locker room and shaved it all off. And, uh, wow. and, and here y'all are. Yeah, now. And here we are now. Yeah. Happily what a, married. What a great decision that was. Wow. You really won that bet. If yeah. you think about it. Yeah, oh, yeah. oh, in the long run <laughs> yeah. for sure. Absolutely. Now I, I think we need to go, go even further back. back because I have so many questions about um you growing up and i was reading about you know your mom had you when she was 15 correct Mm -hmm. and you lived early on with your mom and your grandma and i think aunt and aunt and uncle Mm -hmm. and some cousins or something like that but the funny thing is is i saw a quote where you were talking about how you and your cousins would would kind of y'all got a little wild and rambunctious and there was a back patio door at your grandma's house that that poor glass door just got absolutely mangled Mm -hmm. over and over again what (laughs) please tell the people how many times y'all broke that door oh so if you guys think of like an old wood cherry door um like french doors i think is what it's called but they open up um and then on each door panel there's probably i don't know six glass windows yeah on each uh-huh. side so it's like 24 windows yeah. on each thing um and they were all obviously glass um and you know by the time i was able to pick up a ball and everything i think as of today obviously you know there were there four more grandkids came through there <laughs> i think there was maybe one remaining glass window oh, um, <laughs> all the other ones were replaced by plexiglass uh, wow. Yeah, my grandma was tired of that. So, uh, yeah, she, the, the next thing that we did, we had these cots that we would lay on and then these mats that folded up. And we would get the cots and then we would duct tape them oh my all gosh. the way to the door. And so whether it was throwing it or doing, like, kickoffs, uh, yeah, that door took some beatings. That's hilarious. I love that. Now, when y- – I, I think, like, your relationship with your mom is, like, a really, really cool relationship because it, it is – I'm sure she had to go through – a lot when you were really really young I mean what was um she to you not just in those you know those early kid days but who is she to you now as well yeah I would think um you know early on obviously you know she she did everything she was you know going to school she was you know working multiple jobs and everything so you know I knew early on it wasn't just her you know Mm -hmm. it was my grandma it was my aunts my uncles um and you know that they was all there for me um so they was really helping her out um, but, you know, like I always say, you know, we, we grew together. You know, I watched her grow. Um, I, I watched everything that she did, watched how she went about life. Um, and, you know, that's what obviously being a father now, you know, I try to put, you know, a lot of, I know Layton's young, but I try to put a lot of the same things on her too, um, where, you know, like I said, we grew together. So it was kind of like I was on my own together too. So I was, yeah. I was like taking these things as they came and, and we're kind of learning with it. Um, and, you know, that's kind of what I try to do with Layton now. Um, and then now, you know, obviously she's, she's been my, my support, my role model. Like I said earlier, my support system, um, you know, and my wife and my mom are one or two right there, one A, one B. Um, and, and so, you know, that, that's the person I go to, you know, with any problems, anything that I have, uh, more on the adult side of life, right, obviously. Yeah. Um, but no, you know, it's kind of funny the other day, um, Layton had, had taken a fall and it's kind of honestly one of the first times I've called her and been like, Hey mom, like what do we do? Right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Mom, I'm like, I don't, I don't know what we do here. Um, <laughs> but no, so, so it's, it's pretty fun. Obviously, uh, you know, I love her to death. So, you know, everything that is part of my why as well. Yeah. And I, I'm curious to hear the answer to this. Cause I feel like I know the answer to this. Who taught you how to throw a football? Yeah, that was my grandma. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. That's what so I So my, my uncle obviously played football. Um, and, and so the pads and the helmets were in the house. So I would see him down in his room. I'd go, you know, put on some big old pads, a big old helmet. 
Um, and then, you know, around, you know, just throwing it back. But in the rooms, we used to have the, the wallpaper and the border that went around the top. Um, and my board, it was every single, like, sports thing you could cool. think of. Yeah. So it was football, basketball, tennis, golf. It was all the – so every time I went to bed, that's what I looked up at was, was sports. Um, and, and then, you know, one day, obviously, I picked up the football, and we're out in the front yard, and it's, I'm on this end, my uncle's on the other end, and my grandma's sitting on the porch, and she was like, all right, I'm tired of looking at this. <laughs> um, like, if you're going to do it, you're going to do it right. Yeah, and, you know, I think her dad helped her with that, too, um, up in Ohio. But, yeah, so she's the one who taught me, you know, how to, you know, when to take the laces, what fingers yeah. they should be on, and then how to throw it, so – yeah. That's cool. I love that. Yeah, that's but one that's of my favorite story that's kind of like how the f- the very you know foundation started. And you, I do like that. No matter how many times the glass got broken, it didn't stop you guys from playing football right. in the house. Like oh, that, no, wasn't no, 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 yeah. Yeah. that wasn't an option. That wasn't a matter option. of getting it fixed and yeah. moving on. Um, it, it's always interesting. You, you you look back, and everybody's upbringing is unique, but. It sounds like it, not everything was easy all the time, but it doesn't sound like you would trade any of it, right? Is, is, is all these things that we're talking about kind of is what made you who you are? 100%. You know? I think, you know, I think you could say that for everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people, you know, would have very few regrets or, or would change very few things about, you know, their past life or even yesterday, whatever mm-hmm. happened. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's who makes you you. Um, that's what makes me me. Um, and, you know, I wouldn't change it. I don't regret anything that, you know, happened or have done. Um, and, you know, I'm thankful for all those people in my life that have helped me get to the point where I am today. Mm-hmm. You know, I, it's, it's weird because you, when you were getting recruited to college, there weren't a ton of offers, right? But you committed early, in, like during your junior mm-hmm. year, but you didn't have tons of options. It wasn't like power fives raining down, right? Mm-hmm. And then you go through the draft process and it goes later than probably most people expected. So you think, like, that's a motivator, but you, you also seem to have a good perspective. Like, 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 do you understand what I'm saying? Like, it seems like you're, you're fueled by some of these things, yeah. but at the same time, you kind of understand the it's big reality. picture. Right, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, it's obviously, you know, there's an there's underdog mentality, there's a chip on your shoulder. Yeah. Um, and then there's just going to, to prove, you know, what you know you can do in your own head. Exactly. Um, and so, you know, I know what I can be. I know, you know, how good not only myself, but, you know, this team can be. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, that's something that I just go in every single day is just go to work. Um, you know, just wake up and put your head down and go. Um, and, you know, kind of go back to, you know, how you were raised. That's just kind of how it was. Um, you, you just woke up and, you know, you just went. You went and attacked the day. Whatever was thrown at you, good or bad, you accepted it, and then you moved on and kept going. Um, and so, obviously, you know, as a quarterback, that's something you have to do. Um, and so, yeah. Something that I feel like has been kind of a trademark of yours from even, you know, probably in high school, but definitely time at Cincinnati and now here in Atlanta. And this was something that um, Justin Williams, who used who's used to be my colleague at The Athletic, he covered you at Cincinnati, like, basically your whole time there and he wrote so much about you and so many things that I I got to read about but something that always came up and it was these same quotes over and over and it was just you know Des is someone you want to play for your coaches would say that or if your teammates would be like you know Des is a guy I want to play with and I feel like that even came up the very very first time that we talked to Drake London and Ricky Minicamp last year when you and him had just met and he's like Des is a guy I want to follow when you hear people around you saying that how is you talk about motivating factors like the external motivation and also internal motivation but when you hear things like that how does that kind of epitomize who you want to be and who who you feel like you are yeah obviously you know still at the end of the day you know you know technically the outside noise whatever you want to call it but um you know you hear that and it just makes you want to go harder obviously mm-hmm. you know you hear these guys say that and you hear people talking about you and like you said Justin wrote a lot of things uh, so then what, you know, what does it look like you going out there and just going about your day just to go about it? Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I think that's one thing I do well is, you know, every single day just show up and go to work, um, have a good energy about it. Um, and then obviously, you know, they see the work that, you know, not only myself, but everyone else puts in. Um, and, you know, they see that, you know, I have the energy and want to go out there and be better. Um, and so, you know, for me, it's just about, you know, not only being yourself, um, but being yourself and, and being comfortable around the guys, too. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's one thing that, you know, it just really helped out with my style. Yeah. You know, it, I don't know why this always sticks with me, but we were in Baltimore last year. It was your second start, mm-hmm. I think. it's Coldest day it in Baltimore cold, Ravens Coldest history. day in Baltimore that was history. Rough. Tori and I were dumb enough to go out there for a little bit, but 
you were first on the field before warmups, and the thing that I noticed that really stuck with me is every position, every position group that would come through, you would stop whatever you were doing, come over by the tunnel, and just say what's up to everybody. So everybody knew that you cared about their effort out there, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and, and it seemed like I talked to some people about that after the game, and it just seemed like those little tiny things mean something yes right and as you prepare f to be you know to to start for this team it, it, like is it those little things those everyday little things that help you kind of get ready to lead all 53 100 percent. whether i'm cracking a joke with someone mm -hmm. whether you know i'm being someone in ping pong whatever it may be um just you know growing closer to all these guys you know if there's any younger guys out there listening whatever it may be just grow close with the guys just you know off the field just connect with them um, whenever it may be, whether, you know, if, if you don't have any, you know, sort of connection with the guy in any sort of way, you know, find something, you know, make him laugh, make him smile, whatever it may be. Um, and, you know, that's just going to grow not only the respect for you as a, as a player, um, but as a person as well. And if you have that, um, you know, then those guys will be able to trust you out there on the field. Yeah. I You talk about connections. One of my favorite connections that you have is with Drake London. Yes. I, I love y'all y'all's relationship, just kind of like watching it from – 100 feet back or whatever and what was the first thing that y'all connected on because I feel like y'all connected very quickly in a way that I don't think is like I don't know like you almost feel like kindred spirits in a way um you know probably both being light-skinned I'm just really? yeah, yeah uh you know sometimes sometimes we struggle uh right, with yeah. that sometimes uh and you know just being six four about the same height same color I mean you know there's a lot of similarity we right. both worked out in California um, and so obviously that's what we first connected on. Uh, but no, Drake's my guy. Um, you know, Drake's one of my good friends. Uh, you know, his, his toughest challenge right now in, um, you know, trying to get closer to me would be Layton. Uh, of course. And yeah. so, yeah. you know, I think it was, uh, it, it was, you know, early on, maybe in camp, uh, he, he went to go get her a purse, like a little, a little purse because yeah. she loves purses. <laughs> um, and you know, she was kind of iffy with them and then. He, you know, she hasn't seen him for since the season or whatever. And I had dinner over at my house the other night. So he came over and obviously she's grown up since then. And she's playing with them and doing Aww. this. And Drake only has a, an older sister. Right. So he doesn't know what the whole kids is. And she he looks <laughs> at me, he's like, I don't, what do I do? I don't know how to play with her. Like, what are we going to do? And so he, now that Layton likes her, uh, or likes them, excuse me, you know, they're, they're good friends. Yeah. And so, uh, no, you know, it's just been our relationship since day one has obviously, you know, just been there. Um, and just continue to grow. Uncle Drake. And Uncle, it's Uncle Drake, <laughs> Uncle for sure. Uncle Drake. And you and Drake London, I saw this on one of y'all's Instagram stories, but y'all, you, Drake London, and Tyler Algier have, like, bowled, like, together often. Who's the best bowler of the three? Yeah, and uh, and John Fitzpatrick. And John Fitzpatrick, um, that's right, yeah. So, yeah, we, we, was, we was doing that during the season. Tyler was the main one because he has his own bowling ball. Right. Um, <laughs> it, it, it smells like blueberries. Oddly really? enough, it's actually a ball that smells like blueberries. Okay. Um, Does he spray it with something, or is nope. it like he bought it that he way? He bought it that way. Wow. And it's custom, it's custom molded to his fingers, too, which wow. is kind of crazy. That's okay, Tyler. But it didn't help him. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I got him on, on all those games. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was pretty funny. I love that. I had no idea he had a custom – bowling so ball. yeah so i think it was us four um you know the, when we came in for rookie mini camp yeah. that, that, that was our room, room together yeah, yeah that was yeah. our room and ever since then it's like i said those were the four that was over at dinner the other night we uh went out to arizona for the super bowl together got an airbnb out there stayed out there connected out there and uh yeah i think we're going to a nice dinner this week too so Love that. uh yeah it's just good connections. it's just nice to be able to have people to do things with too because you come into a new city a new circumstance you're a professional now to be able to have guys who are kind of in step with you going through it, I think is really, really nice. 100%. Yeah. I obviously, you know, I have my wife, I have Lee in there right. with me. Uh, you know, Tyler's girlfriend comes back and forth and then Fitz is from Georgia, from Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So he's in the city. And then there's Drake, the California <laughs> kid. Who, he's got his big house and he's the <laughs> only one in it with his dog. And so it was funny for Christmas, his mom is like, Des, like, can you just, can you just, Take care just of yeah, him. just, just bring him over to the house. So I'm like, okay. I was like, I was like, you know, I'll invite him this, that, but I can't force him to come over. And so, uh, I think he actually FaceTimed his parents on Christmas morning oh. and everything. So he was good. But. So sweet. That, That's, you're just taking care of uncle Drake. Yeah, it's yeah. uncle Drake. And yeah. like, in this, like in this little group is, I mean, 
QB one, wide receiver one, Mister mm-hmm. One Thousand, mm-hmm. yeah. and John is going to get his first real crack he's now. Get his right? touch. Yep. Uh, now that he's back healthy, um, are we ready for rapid fire? We sure are. Okay. Start to feel the pressure. Yep. Let's go. <laughs> These are hard hitting, intense much. questions. I oh, know. Yeah. Uh, okay. N- number one. It's basically five questions. They're basically the same to everybody, and we silently judge you on your answers. Okay. okay ready? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, number one. What is your favorite play of your career? Any level. Any level. Uh, against Georgia, right before halftime, tight end. <laughs> I threw a tight end to Josh Wiley. <laughs> All right. You know I went to UGA, right? Oh, no, I didn't. Yeah. Oh, so now Des yeah. is just – Oh, yeah. Now, 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 he's, now he's So going go ahead. <laughs> get it out. Say what you want to say. Back-to-back back national champions. Them dang dogs. <laughs> I'll tell you. Go freaking dogs. Uh, what's your favorite, I don't know, TV show, something you binge, or a movie, anything that you watch all the time or like? Mm. I'm going to give a, a sneaky one here. I'm going to okay. say Grey's Anatomy. Grey's Anatomy. You're a Grey's Anatomy I love guy? Grey's Anatomy. <gasps> Stop it. Yeah. What did, what did you think of um, them killing off um, Patrick Dempsey's character? Did that break your heart? Derek? Yeah, Derek. Yeah, that was Dr. tough. Dr. Shepard? In, the, in the, uh, the truck accident? Yeah. Yeah, it was tough. It was um, so preventable. No, so actually it was it was <laughs> once I met Clara, that's who got me into it. Right, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, back in, it was like junior year, started watching it, and then, I mean, we, we've we gone through it multiple times. I love it. I So, Grey's Anatomy, I wish that I could get into it, but I'm, like, really anti, like, blood. So, any t- I could watch it if they just did, like, the drama, but there's too much, there's too much blood I think what me. helps out, too, is obviously I'm not in the medical field, so I don't right. know, I don't know what they're talking about, if they could be right, but it sounds good. It, it sounds, sounds good. And I know yeah. everyone, you know, talk about <laughs> Meredith Grey, and I'm like, hey, I'll let her perform surgery. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Uh, uh, bonus question here. If Leighton were in this chair right now, what what would be her favorite movie or TV show that she can't stop watching? Ooh, I'm going to go with Moana or Frozen. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's Is that like a constant rotation? Oh, and then Bluey, Bluey during the day. Bluey! Um, okay. I will watch Bluey even when my kids aren't in the room. Oh, We'll, so we'll put her to bed and we will still be on it. Uh-huh. I'll and be on my phone and I'll it. catch myself kind of looking over the TV watching it, get a laugh or two, and then go <laughs> and back, go to, back to my phone. <laughs> but, yeah, Blue is a good one. Um, oh, okay, uh, favorite player growing up? Uh, doesn't the sport. Definitely, um, I would say either Peyton Manning mm-hmm. or um, Ray John Rondo. Okay. Yeah, Rondo, both from, both from Louisville. We both played at the uh, same Optimus League growing up. Oh, that's um, cool. So, yeah. Sweet. If you had a superpower, what would it be? <sighs> I always go back and forth between, like, teleportation. Mm. That's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll go with teleportation. It's a good one. Smart. Yeah, I like that. And last but not least, what's one thing that you will never do again? One thing that I will never do again? Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah. Like, I'm very much, like, ne- I'm never going to, like, feed a goose again because <laughs> it, bit, it bit my finger i told that on the podcast for those who have been with us since the beginning they know that story i don't know i don't know man there, there's a lot of things that you know i might be if you um but i'll still you know at the end of the day be like you know you, you got to do that again right um yeah. i don't know I was, quick story real quick it was one of my worst allergies is horses and my sister had a birthday party when <laughs> she was like five years old at a horse farm <laughs> And I felt so bad because I was there for about 10 minutes. And in yeah. those 10 minutes, my eyes and face <laughs> were swollen. So I'm going to say, because Layton's birthday is coming out, I'm going right. to say never throw a horse party. Never <laughs> throw a horse party. Never okay, horse so party. this is why she's not having a pony this is not, her Yeah, this is why a pony will not be in our backyard. Okay, that's I, good to know. We've I, gotten to the bottom of it. We absolutely have. <laughs> well, that's going to do it for another that was a pretty awesome it's addition really to Falcons yeah. in Focus. Uh, thank you guys for joining in. As always, please rate, review, and subscribe to the Falcons Podcast Network. And uh, I'm Scott. That's Tori. This is Desmond. Thank you so much for stopping by. See you. <laughs>